My experience as a teacher has been largely really positive. Um, I'm in my fourth official year teaching. I've been working for over four years in the Fall River Public Schools. This has probably been my most challenging year, um, but in previous years, like I've been really lucky to connect with my kids really easily and really strongly. very fun, exciting, challenging, and very difficult at times, especially getting acclimated to the student population and diversity that we have. I think things that aren't provided, like I hear about people in other school districts and like I've heard of people that have gotten like stipends to like furnish their rooms or, or you know, they get to like put in um, orders, like big orders to supply their room for the whole year. and. That's just not something that we've had the privilege of having. Basically, we joke and we call it surgery. And the kids will come to me with a book and say, Miss, my book needs surgery. And I have to tape them back together because these have to at least last to the end of the year before I can make a request for new books. What I missed out on going to a low profit school was that uh, yeah, education there didn't really matter. Some teachers really didn't care if you were troubled kids and they were already assumed you were troubled kids so that they already would have a guard on them and wouldn't get to like know you. And there were some that were nice enough that actually got to know you and helped, kind of helped you out through the way. me with anything. All I can remember is that they had the teachers having pencils on their desk, which some teachers gave you new pencils, some didn't care and put the pencils in a cup and they were all broken up. So I, I wouldn't really use the pencils because they're all broken and you couldn't really write with. Our parents being involved in our students and getting their supplies at the beginning of the school year, we put in our syllabus that we are requiring certain supplies and most of the time we end up having to pay out of pocket ourselves because our parents are not um, usually supportive or they're just they're from a different culture, different background that they don't realize the importance it is for some of these things that the kids need. We have never had more than 10 parents come to a parent-teacher conference since I started working here. responsible for most of our supplies in our classroom. Supplies, books, our posters, decorations, um, different growth mindset, fixed mindset charts, um, any of our anchor charts. We're responsible for purchasing all of that. We also purchase some fun things too for the kids, especially when it's the first day of school, Christmas time, we get little gifts for them. So most of that stuff does come out of our pocket. You don't necessarily have to buy it, but then you have an empty looking classroom and then you don't have um, any extra to give the kids to be incentivized and to be happy to be in school and see you. We're short on technology. It's just hard to provide technology for this many kids on the budget that we have. They miss out on like field trips and experiences like that, you know. My kids don't go to like Washington DC for a field trip. They don't get those extended field trip opportunities, these experiences that I think, even me, I went to Swansea schools. I, I always took those for granted. The fact that I had a field trip at least once a year, I took for granted. I spend about $100, $150 a month. Um, for a total by the end of the school year, I've spent almost $2,000. Every year when I do my taxes, I submit my receipts and they've never added up to under $1,000. So that is over the course of the year, um, I'm spending at least $1,000 on my students every year. I didn't start actually learning until I got to high school. They miss out on things like being able to just have brand new books. I've had the same books for um, years, ever since I started teaching, and they are falling apart, and I have, 
I've been able, I've had to replace them with my own money. We purchased binders for our kids, especially in ELA and in seventh grade. Um, index dividers, tab dividers. Um, I buy my own three-hole punch and staplers. Um, uh, lots of pens. Uh, certain kinds of pens because I like to get them the erasable pens since they're in seventh grade and still learning to write without being really messy rather than just using a pencil. Um, folders, um, all the stuff up that I put in my classroom for the boards, the poster boards, the uh, word wall, um, all those index cards. Um, I also purchase different books for my library. Um, or I look for donations for my um, library where kids are required to read independently and that would happen both in elementary and now in seventh grade. The advice that I can give is come together as a community, come together as a union, which we recently did um, go to the state house as a union group to ask for more money and money that is given to us that's owed to us by the state and the government, which is coming down the pipeline. So things are definitely going to change for the better. Um, however, the only other advice that I can give is that if you don't put into your classroom, whether it's financial, mental, health, whatever it is that you have to give 100% of, then you're not going to get it back from the students. And in order to create a um, unified, a um, consistency and accountability in the classroom, you have to put into that, whether it's out of your pocket or not. So definitely coming together and just everyone knowing that they're in the same boat and maybe even just splitting the cost of things can always help as well. But again, there is money available out there. It's coming. There's grant money. We have donors choose. We just need to fight and we need to continue to work towards um, finding this money to bring in. But in the meantime, you have to take it out of your pocket at the moment. Thank you.